Hey everybody, welcome to this video tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com in conjunction with filiasugly.com, which is a time lapse project I've been shooting for the past few months. And I want to share with you some of the things that I've learned in process of creating this time lapse film. And hopefully it can help you either just with general Photoshop and all the other applications we'll be using, or just maybe help you out if you're going out to create a time lapse yourself. So what we're going to talk about today is sort of the color grading and editing of these images in Camera Raw and some of the things that I'm looking at and considering when I'm editing them. Now you can edit in a program or an application like Capture One or Apple's Aperture or Lightroom, but for the sake of just kind of keeping things as simple as possible today, I'm just going to use Adobe's Camera Raw right here from the bridge. And you can do that by just selecting any one of your raw images. These are all raw files, by the way. The .cr2 is the Canon raw file. Select any image and hit Command or Control R to bring up the Adobe Camera Raw editor. And that's what we've got right here. So the first thing that I'm looking at is, well, I, I Looking at the scene, I know that I want this to be very rich. I know that I want uh, the film to be very cinematic. I want the colors to maybe be slightly washed out. I want to be able to see detail in shadows. I want to be able to see detail in highlights. I don't want to go cranking up the contrast so much that I'm losing detail all over the place. So these are just some of the things that are going through my mind. And initially, the very first thing that I notice about this photo is it's just too blue. It's too cold. It's too clinical. It's too harsh looking. Uh, so I want to add warmth. I want to add this depth and just this this inviting feeling that it's it's comfortable to look at. It's it's nice to look at. It's enjoyable to look at. So well, actually before I get to changing color temperature and things like that, let's just um, consider something that I did wrong. This was actually the absolute very first shot that I took uh, for the Philly is Ugly time lapse project on the very first morning of shooting uh, of my very first time lapse. So I didn't quite have the camera leveled. So let's grab the straighten tool up here and just drag across the road and see what happens if we sort of straighten out the scene. And I'm going to go ahead and commit that change. And that looks uh, a bit better. So we've leveled things out a little bit. And it looks like there's a little bit of warp too. This was shot, I can see, with a 17 to 40 millimeter lens at 40 millimeters. So there's a very little bit of sort of distortion. I can go to the lens correction under the profile tab and choose enable lens profile corrections. And uh, it may correct me a little bit. I can play around and see uh, if the, the distortion slider helps me a little bit. So I'm going to push that up to around 140. It works in this image. Every image that you look at is going to be a little bit different. It depends on the lens. It depends on the focal length you shot the images at. Uh, and in this case, right around 140 looks like it works well. But the first thing uh, that I would do after just general immediate stuff that jumps out at me is go ahead and add sharpening. So somewhere around 60 to 70% sharpening typically is going to be good. If I zoom into 100%, I just double clicked the magnifying glass there to zoom all the way in. I can see that adding this kind of sharpening is going to be pretty nice. So there's without the sharpening, then if I add some sharpening, we're just going to pull some details out of these objects, especially, you know, getting down here near uh, City Hall uh, that are sort of almost beginning to be obscured by a little bit of pollution or smog or whatever it is. So I'm going to double click the hand tool there to zoom me back out uh, to uh, my normal fit in screen size and we're going to begin the editing process. Now there are a lot of things you can do here in Camera Raw. There's a lot of stuff you can do in Lightroom. I'm not nearly as familiar with Capture One although I have used it before and uh, I, I've never really done anything with Apple's Aperture. But we could even zoom in here on the ground and get rid of some of these puddles using some of the clone stamp tools and things like that that we have at our disposal here in the Camera Raw editor. We're not going to go ahead and do that today. We're just going to take a look at more general overview stuff uh, when it comes to more the tone and the color grading of the image. So here, well, I'm going to zoom all the way back out. So the first thing, like I mentioned before, uh, this image is just too blue. So I need to adjust the temperature. Uh, and I'm going to do that by dragging the temperature. I'm going to just take a guess and say maybe something like 8,000 kelvins will be kind of cool. Uh, and I, I like that. I like that a lot. The image is overall too bright. Um, I'll adjust that in a little bit, though. Uh, I'm also going to take the tint. I'm going to reduce the magenta, thereby raising the greens. So I'm going to hold my Shift key and just hit the down arrow key once, twice, maybe three times. So we've got a lot more green in there. We can shut off the preview, by the way. You can see before, after. So you can see we're really warming up the image quite a bit. Now, it almost looks like we're losing some detail on the sky. If I look at the histogram, I know that I'm not losing detail on the sky, uh, but it sure looks like it. So I want to darken up the highlights. So I'm going to grab the highlight slider and pull it back a little bit. Maybe negative 50 looks cool. And I'm actually going to do the same thing with whites. And the reason I'm going to do it with the white slider is because I have a feeling that as this 
sun as the sun rises and this glow on the sides of these buildings intensifies we're going to really start to lose some detail in here if i don't sort of preemptively just say hey whites scale back a little bit negative 30 maybe something like that all right i'm going to zoom back out now i'm going to reduce the contrast and this may seem counterintuitive because you always think hey Lots of contrast, very good thing. Well, not in this case. We want to reduce the contrast a little bit. So again, holding down my shift key, I'm just going to knock it back. One, two, maybe three. That looks great. I'm going to boost the light in the blacks. So I'm going to raise up the blacks, you know, one, two, three, maybe 30. That looks great. And then I can give myself a little bit of mid-tone punch or mid-tone contrast using the clarity slider. But you really, really want to be careful using the clarity slider. Zoom in to 100% if you're using this because if you go up too high, it really starts to look bad. So I want to do something like five or six, you know, maybe 10. Uh, that looks good. So I'll shut preview off and then preview again. You can see, all right, that looks cool. We're starting to get a much more cinematic look. I actually might reduce the contrast a little bit more, knock it down to negative 60, let's say. Cool, I like that a lot. And then I want to darken this whole scene just a little bit. So I'll use the exposure slider to knock it down about a half stop. So that's negative 0.50 on the exposure slider. So that's pretty cool. If I zoom all the way in, we can see and we can, you know just tick off preview, turn it back on, and we've made a huge difference. I'm not done yet though. So this is just sort of the, the general initial stuff to go in and begin correcting the image and give it that, that more cinematic look, the look that I really like. Sometimes I'll go over to the uh, the curve, uh, or the curve adjustment I should say, and I use this a ton and it's pretty easy to use. I'll go to the red channel. Let's say I want to introduce a little bit more red into the highlights. I'll just drag this up a little bit. You can see it almost gives this this really early morning feel. It's pretty cool. I really, really kind of dig it. And by the way, the preview is just showing us this panel that we're working in. So without the red, with the red, pretty cool. Then I'll go to the greens, and the opposite of green is magenta. So if I pull some greens out, we're going to start to get a much more magenta scene. I don't necessarily like that because I like the green, right? I like pushing those greens into there. I think that looks pretty cool. And then blue, uh, I'm going to probably pull some blue out, which is going to introduce some yellow, pull some blue out of the highlights, and then push a little bit of blue back into the shadowy areas. So just something like that. So we can see before and after. You can see we've changed the color. We've, we've really enhanced the toning of this image. And then after that, I would do something like coming in here to the, uh, the hue saturation lightness sliders. And really the only thing I'm looking at here is, well, actually a couple things. I've got some yellow here in the clock on City Hall. We've got the orange and yellow in the fiery uh, sunrise. And then we also have the greens of these trees. And I really want the trees and grass to look very bright green. So what I'll probably do is carefully slide the hue of my yellow toward green a little bit. Just a little bit because there's a lot of yellow in grass and trees. And if you make that yellow green, it really enhances and, and makes your grass and trees look a lot better. Then we'll go and increase the saturation of the greens and the yellows a bit so we can check out the yellow and orange glowing a little bit more there on the side of City Hall. There's before, there's after. Very, very subtle change. Uh, and we can even enhance or, or increase the saturation of the orange as well. And then luminance, uh, the lightness. Do you want the greens to be brighter or darker? I'm actually going to darken the greens a little bit. Do you want the yellows to be brighter or darker? I actually want them to be a little brighter. It can be cool if you zoom all the way out. You can see there are the parts that are yellow. And if we brighten or darken them, you can just add a little bit, almost more three-dimensional-ness to your image, a little bit more of that 3D uh, depth, uh, which is pretty cool. With the orange, we'll probably darken the orange a little bit because you can see that's really that fiery glow on the side of the building. So we'll darken that just a touch to compensate for the fact that that's only going to get brighter and brighter as the morning goes on. And then maybe blues will boost them just a little bit because a lot of these buildings in the skyline here in Philly are glass. So they, they're blue and then they reflect a lot of just that natural blue ambient light. So then if we go over here to the presets tab, I can just turn everything off and turn everything back on and we can see the difference that we've affected. Now the only last thing that I would recommend is and this is something I kind of learned uh, the hard way, is just run over a frame and look for little spots that may be on your sensor. They'll sort of be little you know, grayish blue spots that appear on your image. If you run over your image quickly at 100%, you can oftentimes catch them. And you can just use uh, this brush right here, the spot healing brush, and get rid of them. All right, now we don't have any here on this image, and this looks great. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the Done key. I believe I've got everything that I need here. Uh, oh, one other thing you can do is use the graduated filter. This can be fun as well, uh, just to do something like, let's say I want to add more orange to the foreground. I can just pull a nice orange, uh, a nice orange graduated filter up from the bottom, right? So there's without, there's with. 
Kind of cool. Maybe we'll actually hang on to it. So then I'll just hit the done key and there's our changed image. And now we can quickly get this to the rest of our images by right clicking on this image, going develop settings, copy settings, and then scroll all the way down to the bottom and paste, well, right click. So we've, well, let me, let me do that again. Select this image, scroll all the way down to the bottom, hold down your shift key, select the last image to select all of your images. All right, you can see we've got all these images selected. Right click and choose develop settings and then hit paste settings. And what I like to choose from the subset is everything. So this is going to copy any spot removal, spot healing that you've done, any local adjustments. Those are using the uh, the adjustment brush or that graduated filter that I just showed you. Uh, if you do any cropping, it's going to copy the cropping. It's going to copy everything across the board. So it's very useful for something like this. Hit OK. And Bridge is going to think for a minute. It's going to say, hey, updating the settings. And it's going to go through and apply these changes to all of these images. And once you've done this, obviously, the, the settings are going to change always depending on uh, the type of scene you have and the way you shot it. But we can see here, as the scene gets brighter, it's almost unusable. It's a little bit too bright. But that was my mistake for not adjusting the camera at that point. But what I do know is I have a good, what, 100, 150 maybe 190 frames that are very much usable. And I can even do a quick preview here. If I use my arrow keys, I can just flip through and begin to get an idea of what the time lapse would look like, right, with my, with my color grading applied. So just like that, we can start to get an idea of what we're working with. So that is kind of the color grading process that I used. Every uh, angle, every uh, location that I shot cha was different because the lighting was always different. The colors were always different. Uh, everything was always different. So you, you sort of have a, a number of uh, principles that you have in your mind. And mine was I wanted kind of a low contrast cinematic look. I wanted to have detail in my shadows and detail in the highlights even if that meant having less contrast in the scene overall. And I really, really liked the way it came out. I also tended toward more warm images rather than the cooler images when it comes to the color temperature. Uh, but other than that, that was uh, generally how I got what I got and using both Camera Raw or Adobe Lightroom, which have pretty much the same tool set uh, when it comes to the sliders and everything. That's how I got what I got for the Philly is Ugly project. And that's how you can take landscape shots or even portrait shots and anything you use if you're a photographer or a designer and you've got Camera Raw images and you want to take them into Camera Raw and do some fun stuff with them. There's a quick, brief uh, overview of how I use the Camera Raw Editor or how I use the Camera Raw Editor for this project. So thanks for checking out this tutorial, guys. Thanks for sticking around. Make sure you go check out the website. That's www.tutvid.com and phillyisugly.com for that matter. And uh, thanks for watching.